What's good, Buck Nation? It's your rude boy, Juan Agadello, and thanks for tuning in to Tough Bucks. Today's episode is part three of our series dubbed Tough Bucks with the most to prove in 2020. And on this episode, we're gonna be talking about the number one player that I believe has the most to prove. But before we get started, don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment below. And for you real Tough Buck fans out there, click that bell icon so that you get real-time notifications on when new videos drop. You can also check me out at bucksreport.com where you can access additional Buccaneers content. So with that, wash your hands and let's a giddy up. The unthinkable happened in 2020, and no, I'm not talking about COVID-19. I'm talking about big time Tom Brady signing with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. If you asked me a year ago that he'd be taking his talents to Tampa, I'd laugh right in your face. But he did, and boy is the kid happy about that. Yeah, I'm still a little bit bitter that the Bucks didn't re-sign Jameis Winston, but when you have a chance to get one of the greatest players to ever play the quarterback position, you have to go and get it. The Yucks, I mean, the Bucks have had a losing culture for quite some time now. Really, it's been since their Super Bowl win back in 2002. That's 18 years, folks. I mean, come on. Seriously, 18 years. Last season, the Buccaneers added Bucko Bruce, and he chose Tampa because of the talent. He's at the point in his career and life to win now and doesn't have the luxury of time to rebuild. He thought the Bucks had the talent to reach the playoffs and make a run for it. And he was right, but unfortunately 2019 didn't pan out the way we all thought it would. Yeah, there were some bright spots, but as a whole, the entire team and even the coaching staff played undisciplined football. And Jameis Winston's historic 30 for 30 season was really the culprit of the Bucks losing some close games and continuing the Buccaneers losing narrative. So what do you do if you're the Bucks? How do you change a losing culture? <laughs> you go out and get the winningest quarterback of all time. That's what you do. And the best part about it for Bruce and Jason Light was that they didn't have to do too much convincing. Tom was convincing them why he should be a Buck. Brady, like Bruce Arians, chose Tampa because he's in win-now mode, and he knows the talent on this team gives him the best chance to get another Lombardi trophy. In his entire career, Brady has never had a losing season. In the regular season, he's won a total of 219 games, and from 2001 through 2019, the New England Patriots won the AFC East outright 17 freaking times. In the playoffs, Brady has gone 30 for 11, going to 12 AFC Championship games. My dude has gone to nine Super Bowls and won six of them. To put it simply, Brady is a winner, and he is what the Bucks need. When you think of Tom Brady, you think of Bill Belichick. One of the ongoing debates around the league is which of the two are more responsible for the success of the New England Patriots. Those two were together for the entire Patriots run with success in the past two decades and are now recognized respectively as the greatest head coach and greatest quarterback in the NFL history. This will be the first year we'll see Brady playing for someone other than Belichick. We already know Belichick's record as a head coach prior to Brady, and it was average at best. Now don't get it twisted, he's always been a defensive mastermind, but he didn't taste consistent success until Brady came in on the scene. Brady gets a fresh start, and the competitor in him wants to prove his championship pedigree to the entire world. These next two years will tell everyone who is the superior, Brady or Belichick. I'm gonna go with Brady. It's no secret that the Bucks are getting Brady in the latter part of his career. But the addition of Tom Brady is a serious upgrade for the Buccaneers on many levels. For starters, you go from an erratic gunslinger to one of the most accurate in the past decade. Brady also brings with him the bright lights of prime time football and overall puts the buckos under the media microscope. Players like Levante David, one of the most underrated linebackers in the NFL, will benefit the most from the new addition. Finally, in terms of rankings, the Bucks get propelled to the top 10, something that would not have happened if Jameis Winston was still around. With all that said, the pressure is on Tom Brady because with an upgrade of this magnitude comes the responsibility of following through and producing W. A lot of Buck fans' expectations are considering this season to be a Super Bowl or bus year. <laughs> Not for the kid. I'll be content with the Bucks winning a playoff game and ending a 12-season drought of not making the playoffs. 
but how tight would it be if the Bucks could actually make it to the Super Bowl? It would be the first time a team would play the Super Bowl in its own stadium in NFL history. Let's go! There are some concerns out there from analysts about Tom Brady. In 2019, Brady had one of his worst statistical campaigns with his accuracy taking a big dip, finishing the season with a combined completion percentage of just 60.5%. But it's not all of his fault. I put the blame on his supporting cast, especially his receivers. Outside of Edelman, the receiving core of the Patriots were trash last year. The one or two times he did have a deep threat receiver in Antonio Brown and Josh Gordon, Brady played lights out. And with the Bucks, Tom Brady gets a plethora of stud receivers. There's also this perception that Brady is a dink and dunk passer and can't throw the deep ball at the age of 42 as effective as he did earlier in his career. And quite frankly, I think that's false. Brady's 43% completion rate in 2019 on passes of 20 or more air yards was the seventh highest in the league. He also threw seven touchdown passes of 20 or more air yards last season, his most since 2006. Brady is the best at what he does because he's smart. If the deep read isn't there, he checks it down and gets something rather than nothing. Again, unlike the New England Patriots, the elite receiving core of the Buccaneers will capitalize on Brady's accurate deep ball. However, the transition to Tampa Bay hasn't been a smooth one thus far for Tom Brady. Early on, he mistakenly entered the wrong house while trying to link up with offensive coordinator Byron Leftwich, and shortly after that incident, multiple teams, the Saints, inquired if the Tampa Bay Buccaneers violated the NFL's dead period policy. But the NFL determined that no violation occurred. He then got kicked out of a public park in downtown Tampa while trying to train by a city employee during stay-at-home orders. But now that the stay-at-home orders are easing up in Florida, Brady has been able to link up with his new teammates in smaller workouts and has been doing so for some time now. How long? Who knows? The important thing to get out of all of this is the passion and professionalism Brady has and what he's willing to do to achieve success. Remember, this is coming from a guy whose only request from the Bucks when he got signed was to get the numbers for all of his new teammates. For sure, the first two Bucks Brady contacted were the tag team champions of all the receiving duos in the NFL, and that's Chris Godwin and Mike Evans. Chris Godwin had a breakout season last year, and Mike Evans achieved something only Randy Moss has ever done, and that's to have six straight 1,000 yard seasons to start his career. I'm sure Tom Brady is taking this to heart and will do everything he can to make sure Godwin continues to develop and shine while helping Evans reach an NFL record by being the first receiver ever to reach 1,000 yards in the first seven years of his career. Tom Brady has a lot on his shoulders and the most to prove on the Bucks. The entire city of Tampa Bay is counting on this man to change this team's losing culture to a winning one. He's out to prove to all the doubters out there that he can still play at a high level even at the age of 42. And like Peyton Manning, Brady wants to take his new team to the Super Bowl, and more importantly, win that bad boy. And that's our episode for today, folks. Tough Bucks, let me know if you think Tom Brady is the buck with the most to prove. Do you think he'll take the Bucks to the promised land? Let me know your thoughts by leaving a comment below. Like, subscribe, and as always, wash your hands and stay safe. So until next time, keep firing them cannons.